It looks as if the MEAC is in way more trouble of disbanding than I think a lot of us even knew about. As it looks as if, it appears as Howard, Howard University is going to join the CAA, not this season, but next season. All the reports are going to, you know, are pointing that direction that Howard is looking to jump ship from the MEAC to the CAA. We're going to talk about that and what that means for the future of the MEAC, especially in football, right after the bump. What's good, good people? My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel with Victor Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, because we upload it every single day. Now, Howard, Howard University, the Howard Bison, look like they are going to jump ship from the MEAC to the CAA. This was reported over the weekend, and then there were some other reports that were saying Howard has ha held this CAA invite for a while. They've held their invite. We know Hampton recently left the MEAC to go to the CAA. We know, or... We know A&T recently left the MEAC to go to the Big South and then the Big South to go to the CAA. And now it looks as if Howard is going to do the same thing and jump ship and go to the CAA. We're going to take a look a little bit at the article written by HBCU Game Day. Shout out to the guys over at HBCU Game Day. And it says, Howard appears to be ready to make the move out of the MEAC into a new conference. Multiple sources tell HBCU Game Day that Howard officials are prepared to move to the Colonial Athletic Association starting in 23 through the 24 season hbcu game day reached out to howard no comment howard will be the 14th team in the caa joining july 1st of 2023 and then they list out all the other teams the caa and howard have been involved in ongoing discussions since at least 2021 according to their source howard would be the third hbcu in the last four months to join the fcs conference joining hampton and north carolina a t who both accepted uh, into the conference earlier this year, Hampton in January, a and in February. Both schools have long storied history with Howard Hampton and uh, Howard Hampton and oh, it says a and were two of the founding schools of the CIAA. And then a and and Howard were both founding members of the MEAC in 1970. Uh, the uh, and this is big. This this part right here is big. It says Howard's departure would leave the MEAC with just seven full time members and only five full-time football participants. Now, that's the part that that, that is scary. Hampton and North Carolina a and are both set to leave the Big South to join the CAA in July of 2022. Now, as I said, let's take a look at this right here. Because the MEAC will now only have seven members in their conference, but only five football participants. So let's look at the MEAC standings from 2021. And I just... This is so, like I said, you got South Carolina State, North Carolina Central, Delaware State, Norfolk, and Morgan State will be the five teams that are left because, as we know, Howard by July 1st, 2023, will no longer be a member of the MEAC. And that is scary because how do you operate a football conference with only five schools? Let me ask that once again. How do you operate a football conference with only five schools? That means you can only play four conference games. Four conference games in a 11, 12 game schedule. So you'd have to find seven out of conference games. That that isn't sustainable. That isn't sustainable. And because of that, you're looking at what could be the demise of the MEAC conference with Howard jumping ship over to the CAA. It, it, the MEAC has had so many departures recently from Hampton, North Carolina A&T. You lost FAMU and Bethune Cookman to the SWAC. And now you're losing Howard, one of the most prestigious U HBCUs in the country. So not just on an athletic standpoint. Like losing Howard from your conference in an academic in the world of academia is way bigger than what you're losing just on the football field. Way bigger than what you're losing on the basketball court. Like losing Howard is huge. Just like losing A and T was huge. Just like losing all of those schools were really, really big for the MEAC. And so, and if we're just strictly talking football, how can you field a celebration bowl with no MEAC? 
This question, these are questions that are going to be asked. These are questions that need answers. These are questions that that is a big fear for everybody. It should be a fear for everybody involved. Now, the some people have suggested, well, maybe the SWAC can absorb the la- the remaining five. Uh, the remaining five MEAC schools, South Carolina State, North Carolina Central, Delaware State, Norfolk State, and Morgan State. And honestly, that just isn't realistic. If I'm just being honest, that just isn't realistic simply because who the SWAC already has 12 teams. Who is going to field a 17-team conference? That, that's no. That's not, like 17 te- you already have 12 schools in the SWAC. You already have 12 schools, and you, you can only play what? Six conference games, eight, com- you know, six, seven, eight conference games, something like that. You can only play eight conference games. That's what I meant. Sorry about that. Eight conference games in a 17 game conference. No, that's, that's just not, no, it's just not going to work. <sighs> losing Howard is big for the MEAC, and losing Howard is not only big for the MEAC. If we're strictly talking football, losing Howard is big for the Celebration Bowl because how can you justify? having a conference being represented in a, in a big time HBCU bowl game or what's being deemed to a lot of people, including myself as the HBCU national championship game. When you only have, like, when you only have five schools and some of the biggest, best football programs in HBCU football, the Howards, the ANTs are no longer like in the running. They're no longer in the running. That's rough. So here is my like, you know, being the commissioner of the MEAC is like one of the hardest jobs in the world right now. Because if you lose out on Celebration Bowl, you're losing out on $3 million for inter- universities. I want to say both teams get over a million dollars apiece. All amenities and expenses are paid for. The conference, I want to say, gets a million dollars. And then your band travels for free. You get all the bowl game, bowl week activities. Your teams, obviously, everything is accommodated. Meals, traveling, a lodging. For both the band, the staffs, and the team. All of that is gone if you lose the celebration bowl. So you can't lose the celebration bowl. So, and like I'm saying, all that to say, you can't lose it. And so, what are some like quick fix type of solutions? Well, you got to reach out to TSU, Tennessee State. Obviously, I think TSU is not thinking about joining an HBCU conference because I think they're thinking about, you know, they're trying to go, go FBS. I think Eddie George is on, like, the fastest track to try to get to the FBS as possible. Now, whether that is possible in a fast-track manner, I don't think so because they still have to get their attendance up. They still have some, like, in-house stuff they have to fix before they can even consider going FBS. But I think he has their mind with some of their games that they're scheduling, Ohio State they're trying to get on the schedule, they got Notre Dame on the schedule, some of the things that they're trying to do, they're trying to shoot for an FBS. So, but you still got to make the phone call. You got to reach out to Tennessee State. I think you got to consider Bowie State. Bowie State has been a top-ranked, you know, Division II program. They've won a bunch of championships. They've they've got some NFL draft prospects. They got some really good players on the team. You got to reach out to Bowie State. You got to make some phone calls. You have to make some phone calls to try and save this conference. It's been around since 1970 to try to save this conference that is losing some heavyweights. To try to save a conference that quite frankly, needs to be saved. (laughs) It needs to be saved. But this could have a major ripple effect. This doesn't just affect the MEAC and what's going on with their schools. This could affect the SWAC too because this could affect the Celebration Bowl. And this could affect $3 million along with everything else that goes along with the Celebration Bowl that benefits SWAC schools, that benefit MEAC schools, that benefits HBCU football, period. So th- this is this is a big blow. Losing Howard to the CAA is like I'm not going to understate it. It is a huge, devastating blow. But how can the MIAC respond is what everybody is going to be waiting for, and what how they are able to respond could determine the future in the progression. We, we've seen a great progression of HBCU football. And that's not to say that it can't continue with North Carolina, a t Hampton, and Howard, and the CAA, and what Jackson State, FAMU, uh, all these teams, uh, Grambling, are doing in the SWAC, and then what a school like Tennessee State that's kind of in limbo is able to do as well. Like, I'm not saying it can't stop the overall brand power by these schools jumping ship to a different conference. I, I don't think that can, like, I don't think that just makes or breaks a school, makes or breaks momentum. It definitely doesn't help momentum. It definitely doesn't help momentum. I'm not going to act like it does. 
but you don't have to only play HBCUs to be nationally relevant. You just have to put a good product on the field. You have to put a good product on the field and you have to be able to market yourself. Those are two like aspects that you don't have to play Grambling and Bethune and FAMU and Alcorn and Prairie View every week to, to do those two things. You don't have to. But the momentum and the trajectory that things were going, this does put a slight damper on everything. And that includes what's taking place in the SWAC. I'm not going to act like it doesn't. It, it also affects because if that celebration bowl is in limbo, it, it can't no longer be called it, with a five-team conference in the MEAC, as good as some of those teams are, especially South Carolina State. The, calling it the Black College National Championship when you don't include a and you don't include Howard, and you don't include some of these good programs, it, it kind of dampers it a little bit in my eyes. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave your thoughts in the chat. Once again, my name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. with the Black Boss Channel and Victor Formation. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at jlightsey7. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace.